How can you go abroad? What is the easiest way to go abroad? You will find out everything in this video. Assalamu alaikum. I hope you're doing good. My name is Dr. Bashir Siddiqui. I'm based in US. Uh, if you're first time on my channel, I would request you to subscribe, especially if you have interest in study abroad, traveling, food, culture, uh, science and technology, etc. I try to make vlogs uh, on various topics, on wide range of topics due to my interest. But study abroad, uh, how can you settle abroad, how can you go abroad uh, is really important topic and I really want to talk about this uh, because I know a lot about uh, these topics. I have dealt uh, with these things quite a lot in the past based on my experience. I have been associated with teaching and research uh, in Finland. Uh, I know how scholarships are granted, what kind of opportunities are there in the world. So I really want to, uh, you know, spread the information. I really want to help others uh, from what I have learned in my experience. One favor I would like to ask you is to share this video or my channel with your friends. There might be guys, you know, in our circle who are planning to go abroad, who wants to go abroad. So this channel might be helpful for them. All right. So without any further ado, let's get right into the topic. How can you go abroad? Uh, recently, I have done a very comprehensive video about moving to Finland with your family. Uh, you can find the link on my channel. Uh, link is also uh, visible on the screen. Uh, do check out if you have interest in moving to Finland with family. Uh, but even after that, I keep uh, receiving requests uh, about the same topic. How can you go abroad? Someone is asking, how can we go to Japan? How can we go to US, etc. So today uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, tell you a very generic way to go abroad. So this is the easiest way, in my opinion, to get out of the country. No matter if you are in Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, anywhere in the world. If you want to go abroad, in my broad experience, this is the easiest way. And that is PhD. If you are thinking... PhD, I'm not going to study, who will do a PhD, etc. Hang on. I'll explain in detail how PhD is one of the most attractive way to get abroad. If you are thinking uh, PhD is like, uh, you know, uh, doing masters or uh, it's like uh, you will become a student again, that is not the case. PhD is different, especially if you do PhD in Europe or US that is entirely different than the perception you have about PhD. PhD is just like a job, you know? So what you do in your job? You go and work for eight hours. What do you think? PhD is any different than the job you are doing? No, PhD is just like a job. You go to university or, you know, uh, any other research institute where you are doing your PhD, you spend eight hours, nine hours, depending on the workload. What you do? You do research. You do the findings. So that is your job. It is entirely different than you being a bachelor student where you go to university every day, you spend eight hours, you are taking, uh, you know, different courses and then doing assignments and then you have midterm, you have exams, etc. Yes, you have to study in PhD, but that is very small portion of the entire PhD journey. For example, if I tell you uh, in Finland, in terms of courses, you only have to do 40 credits, 40 credit hours of courses you have to take for PhD and that you can do in just one year and rest of the time, 75% of the time is only research. If you are in Pakistan and want to go abroad to work, that is out of the question. It is impossible to get a sponsorship to work anywhere in the world while being in Pakistan. If you have a fully funded PhD position, then you can go to US, you can go to Europe, you can go to Japan, China, South Korea, anywhere in the world. I'm not saying this based on the assumption. As I mentioned, I have been in university, I have been in research. I know folks who have uh, gone abroad from Pakistan, India, Bangladesh. I know folks who went to US from Pakistan. I know folks who come to Finland from Pakistan. I know folks uh, who uh, went to, you know, other European country from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. So PhD is one of the easiest way and very attractive way to go abroad. Why PhD is the easiest and most attractive way to go abroad? Number one reason is visa. Even if you find a job from your home country, 
it would be very unlikely that uh, different companies would sponsor you. If you are in Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, I don't know how many companies would be willing to sponsor you to bring you over. Because I mean, there is no lack of talent in Europe, right? There is no lack of talent in US. So why they would go all the misery and uh, wait time to sponsor you or to bring you over from Pakistan or India or Bangladesh. They can find the talent right here. But for PhD, because PhD is very specific. PhD, you do PhD in very specific domain. So it might not be possible to find the right candidate even in the US. It might not be possible to find the right candidate in EU. So that is the reason uh, you know, universities have an upper hand when it comes to sponsoring visa for any candidate anywhere in the world. Another reason is that you have a salary. You have a job right from day one. So if you have secured a fully funded PhD position and when you come to US or Canada, then you are working from day one and you are getting a salary, right? Which is very different than you being a bachelor's or master's student. You are not getting paid for doing bachelor's or even master's. But in PhD, you have a job. You don't have to think about, uh, you know, how you're going to uh, cover your living expenses, how you will pay your rent. So you will have a job. You will have a white collar job in your own domain that is not less than any blessing. Another reason is flexibility. You know, flexibility is one of the top most reason for lazy people like me to go this route uh, in my career. Flexibility is very important. And, you know, these days, uh, flexibility is the key. I mean, uh, after pandemic, this flexibility has become very common. But even before that, you will find many, many guys who like to do freelancing, who do not want to go to office every day, who do not want to, you know, get tied to one employer. They just want to be free. They just want to work when they want to do. They just want to, uh, you know, earn money when they have to. So flexibility is very important. Flexibility is the key here. So in job, you have to be in your office, uh, you know, eight hours, nine hours every day. But in PhD, you have flexibility to go to university or research institute anytime you like. You just have to do your part. You just have to do your job. So you can do it at any time. I used to visit university in the middle of the night because that was the time I, I was able to focus. It was silence and I was able to write my thesis or, you know, uh, research papers, etc. So flexibility is very important if you are a person like me or if you are a person who prefers flexibility. Another reason is traveling. If you like to travel, if you want to, uh, you know, see different parts of the world, then traveling is another, uh, you know, key aspect of doing PhD. You will have enormous opportunity to go present your paper anywhere in the world. Who goes to Thailand for a conference, right? I went there because I wanted to go there. So I found a conference in Thailand. Uh, I mean, not like any conference, IEEE conference. I published a paper and then I got a chance to visit there. Who wouldn't want to go to Thailand uh, for, uh, for amazing food and, uh, you know, amazing beaches and island? So you have flexibility to publish your paper, to take your research from anywhere in the world, which might not be the case if you are working. If you are working as an engineer, you may not be uh, allowed to travel. Your job may not uh, require you to travel. So that is another perk of doing PhD. Additionally, research exchange is very popular uh, program if you are pursuing PhD. As I mentioned, if you are a person who likes to travel, who likes to, uh, you know, experience different culture, uh, food, etc., then this is really good opportunity. So while uh, doing PhD in Finland, for example, you can easily spend six months or one year in any other European country or US or Canada. So this is like a lifetime opportunity, in my opinion, because I love to travel, uh, which you may not have, which you will not get if you are working a regular job. Next is networking. You know, in PhD, you are uh, working on a research project. In most cases, those projects are uh, sponsored by industry. 
So many industries, you know, they are collaborating very closely with the university. So you will have an opportunity, you will have a chance to work with industry folks. You will know uh, those folks, you will be having regular meetings with those guys. You will be working on, you know, cutting edge technology. So when you graduate, there will be a possibility, opportunity to go and work in those industry. So the networking or the connection you will make that would be really valuable in your future career. Last but not least, bringing your family with you. Who wouldn't want to take their family with them when they're going abroad? So PhD uh, provides you this huge opportunity to take your family with you and go anywhere in the world. In other cases, you will think twice before taking your family with you, right? How you will survive? What kind of expenses you will face? I mean, how you would make the ends meet? But in PhD, when you have a job, uh, when you will be earning from day one, as I mentioned, you will not care about those things. You can just take your family with you and go anywhere. You would be able to uh, survive because there are many opportunities around the world where you will be getting a higher salary if you bring your family over. If you ask me, this is one of the best and easiest way to get abroad from Pakistan or India or Bangladesh or anywhere in the world. Let's say if you are uh, working, uh, if you're doing a job, then what you need to do? You just need to uh, prepare yourself. You just need to uh, prepare all the documentation and apply. And just wait. You go to your normal uh, regular job every day and then you just wait for the outcome. As soon as you have a PhD position, you are uh, granted a scholarship or, uh, you know, a funded PhD, then you can start the visa process. Now coming back to how you can uh, pursue PhD, I have already made a very comprehensive video. Uh, you can see the link uh, visible on the screen uh, right away. Uh, you can also find that video on my channel where I have explained in detail how can you pursue PhD. But briefly, I would like to tell you, if you, uh, you know, plan to do PhD, then what are the documents you need? You need to have a master's degree or 18 years of education. Uh, you need to have IELTS academic. GRE is not mandatory, but if you have GRE, uh, that is really good. It will enhance your chances to get a scholarship, especially in US, Canada or Middle East. You need to have a generic research plan that is very easy to make. Uh, you know your domain, you know what areas uh, you want to do research. So, you know, you can uh, spend some time and make a very generic research plan that can be circulated. You need letter of recommendation uh, that you can get from your previous teachers, professors. What else? Uh, I think that's it. If you are really uh, planning to apply for PhD, I think it may not take more than three months to gather all the documents and then you can just apply. I try to uh, upload videos about scholarships, uh, European, US, Middle East from time to time. Uh, this is one of the way to, uh, you know, find out about those opportunities. Uh, but I will try to make a very comprehensive video on how uh, to find PhD opportunities around the world. So stay tuned. But meanwhile, uh, you can use LinkedIn or Google to find out about those opportunities. To summarize, PhD is one of the easiest and most attractive way to go abroad. If you have a PhD position, then trust me, you can get visa of anywhere in the world. You can go to US very easily. You can go to any European country if you have a valid PhD position. You can go to Middle East, etc. You will have a job. You will be earning from day one. So you don't have to worry about your expenses. You can bring your family with you. You can bring your kids with you. And, you know, you can travel uh, places for conferences, research exchange. Uh, you will be working on cutting edge technology. You will have a collaboration with industries, uh, which would, you know, definitely help you in the future for job perspective. Uh, you will have flexibility. I don't know what else you need. I hope this video will be useful for you. If you have any question, uh, do write in the comment section. I will try to get back to you. You can also contact me via Instagram. Do not contact me on Facebook. I do not check Facebook anymore. Instagram is your best bet to get hold of me. Feel free to like, subscribe and share with your friends. I would really appreciate your help supporting the channel. I'll see you in next video on any other interesting topic. 
Uh, meanwhile, if you have any topics on mind, you can write them uh, in the comment section or tell me via Instagram. I'll try to cover those as well. Until then, have a great day.